In today's world of GPS and satellite imagery, when almost every inch of the planet is accounted for, it's difficult to imagine a time when it wasn't like this. But we can think back to an earlier time, a time when even road signs did not exist. At this time, the names of places themselves served as signposts to guide travellers on their journey. This video is the first of a four-part series where we will explore the relationship between Irish place names and some principal Gaelic families, beginning with Ireland's northern province of Ulster. We begin our journey in County Tyrone, nestled upon rolling hills and bushy forests in the heartland of Ulster. It is the only northern county whose place name still directly relates to an ancient Gaelic clan. In Irish, County Tyrone is known as Tyr Owen which directly translates as the land of Owen, as it was the ancestral home of the Kenyal Owen, meaning Owen's kindred or clan. It derives this appellation from the descendants of the 5th century Owen MacNeil, who founded the ancient kingdom of Alec here. Tyrone was once the traditional seat of the O'Neill family chieftains and was so connected to the O'Neills that it is still known colloquially as the O'Neill County. The county crest bears the famous O'Neill Red Hand family emblem, serving as a reminder of this legacy. County Armagh was also a centre of primary importance for the Northern O'Neill clan. This county's place name derives from the words Ard Macha, meaning Macha's height, after the goddess Macha and the Grand Palace Fortress of the same name that once sat atop a hill here, also known as Navan Fort. Armagh's fertile hills were famous for the delicious fruit they produced and earned Armagh its epithet, the Orchard of Ireland. Situated on the southern shores of Loch Ney, we find more indicators of O'Neill family legacy in the old barony of O'Neill land, a territory which was comprised of three distinct districts, each of which connected to powerful ancient Gaelic clans. In addition to O'Neill land, these include Clan Brassel, after the ancient Clan Brassel dynasty, and Clan Can, after the Clan Cana, from which the family name McCann is derived. In medieval times, the O'Garvies were chiefs of Clan Brassel, but was ultimately overthrown by the McCanns, who would then take up the position of lords of Clan Brassel. Next we travel to Donegal, Ireland's most northerly county. Its location is geographically cut off from the Republic, and politically separate from the north, earning it the affectionate nickname of the Forgotten County. While its current name Donegal, or Dún and Yal, meaning Fortress of the Foreigners, derives from Gaelic and refers to a Viking fortress once situated on the site of the principal town, its earlier Gaelic name recalls a more powerful time for the Irish clans of the north. Originally these lands were known as Tyrconnell, or Tyrconnell, meaning the land of Cunnell, or the ancestral territory of Cunnell's descendants, after another son of Nile of the Nine Hostages named Cunnell Gulvan, said to have been baptised by St. Patrick himself during his 5th century Christian mission to Ireland. Before the total conquest of the island was completed in the early 17th century, this land was held to be the last truly independent sovereign Gaelic kingdom, it was known as the O'Donnell County, after its most powerful ruling family, the O'Donnell, themselves a branch of descendants from Cunnell Gulvan. Members of this clan occasionally held the position of High King, and they ruled their own lands until the final fall of the Gaelic Order upon the flight of the Earls in 1607. We continue our journey to Fermanagh, where we find yet another powerful Northern Gaelic clan in the Maguire family. The word Maguire comes from the Irish Macorah, meaning the son of the brown-haired one. They were based around County Fermanagh, a place name which comes from the Irish Fermanagh, though the true meaning is unclear. It may mean a region of the monks. The more common derivation is taken from Fir Ma Enoch to mean men of the lakey plains. Considering that Loch Erne envelops the hilly landscapes, and that today the county is known as the Lakeland County, it seems the latter explanation is more likely to be true. Moving next to County Monaghan. In the Gaelic tongue, 
it is called Munachan, from the root word Mun, meaning either bush or more likely a hillock, and can be taken to mean a place of hillocks. Monaghan's principal families include the Northern Machmahans, who are unrelated to the County Clare clan of the same name, deriving from the Gaelic Machmahama, meaning the son of the bear. The O'Duffy clan, from the root word dove, meaning black or dark, the MacOwens, meaning the sons of Owen, and the McCormacks, or the sons of Cormac. It once made up part of the ancient Irish kingdom of Oriel, or Aryla, founded in the 4th century by the legendary three Collas, Colla Us, Colla Mian, and Colla Fochwick, sons of Uwe Duvlin and Aelach, daughter of the King of Alba, which is now Scotland. And now we have County Cavan, deriving from the Gaelic on Cavan, meaning the hollow. And this is our final stop in this part of the series. Its history as it relates to two key Irish clans is an interesting one. In earlier times, Cavan made up part of the proud Gaelic kingdom of Brefni, a confederation of great Irish families that reached the height of its power around the 12th century. It extended as far west as Drumcliff County Sligo and as far east as Kells County Mead, and included County Leitrim among its territory. Rulership of this kingdom was hotly disputed by two key families, the O'Rourke and the O'Reillys, families which remain strong in the area to this day. The historical rivalry between these clans resulted in many bloody battles and ultimately the confederation would split into the independent kingdoms of East and West Brefni, each with their respective ruling clan. The territories remained like this until the colonial campaigns of Queen Elizabeth I of England, when the lands would be split into the counties of Cavan and Leitrim with Cavan becoming part of the province of Ulster and Leitrim becoming part of the province of Connacht. Well, that's all we have in this, the first of a four-part series. Join me in the next episode, where we will continue our journey through Irish place names and their associated families by exploring the counties of the southern province of Munster. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell if you want to be the first to hear when I upload new videos. Until next time, Slán agus Gurra Mahagut. Goodbye and thanks.